just say roots and herbs Come my nerves, they can cool call each other Hey, ashwagandha, let me stay longer So simple real and make me do need a gorilla lila You just a quan and a spin like a bubble and lila Rate of all, you don't need no umbrella lila Greetings, welcome everyone to another exciting episode of Ita Talks Podcast. I'm your old chef Troy Levy. Today's episode is sponsored by Taste of Ital Condiments, where you have a mango, scotch bonnet sauce, people are calling it liquid gold, and our Elsa style escabit sauce, people are telling us it's good and everything. So make your dish awesome by trying one of our excited, awesome, clean and healthy condiments from Taste of Ital Condiments. Now Today episode, we're going to be speaking about two major things. And I think when I say two major things, it's major to me in a, a number of ways. But one is the development of us, um, you know, are we developing our kids, our youth today in today's society? And the other one is the development of um, our young entrepreneurial chefs who are finding it more easier to do things on their own rather than working for somebody um when i say working for somebody i mean going clocking on a regular nine to five um the transition from that because a lot of people are becoming entrepreneur not because they want to be but because it is more conducive to their mental and physical health you know sometimes when you're working for people you have to go out when you don't want to go you don't feel to go you have to clock in and punch in and, and make sure you do the people and work or else you're not get paid. So uh, we're gonna touch a little bit on that and also just speak a little bit about our entrepreneurs, especially chef, the young chefs who are becoming their own business mogul, whether they are running a catering company, whether they're doing dinner service, you know, whether they're, they're making condiments and selling condiments, we're just going to dive into that a little bit and speak about that. But before we do that, I just want to say thank you guys so much for your awesome feedback on the, the few episodes that we have put out on our Ital Talks podcast. I really and truly appreciate all of that. And that definitely encouraged and inspired me to continue to do this. Um, well, well, let's dive right into it. So, um, in today's society, you know, I have definitely have had my fair share of challenge, you know, growing a teenager and, 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 a, and, a, and a little kid that feel like, feel that they are as curious as I was when I was younger. And me now seeing myself in them and trying to making sure that I try to get it right. Now, when I say I try to get it right, I know that a lot of us can relate, especially people my age and a little bit younger, a little bit older, can definitely relate that, um, you know, these kids nowadays, um, you know, a lot of us didn't get into a relationship with a significant other and say, you know what, all right, now we have the house, now we have the car, now we have certain things, so let's start a family. A lot of us didn't work, you know, that way. You know, a lot of us, you know, we do mix match. We meet somebody, we like them, you know, sex coming to play, unprotected sex or whatever the case is. And then, you know, we get a kid. I get two kids. Uh, we didn't have no plans in place and certain things. So I think that's one of the most important things to speak about is like, when you get into a relationship, developing a relationship, working on do's and don'ts and, and, and trying to figure out another human being who you're going to try to spend a large quality of your life with. And also, you know, to, 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 to teach, enlighten and, and nurture a child, you know, when some of the time you were brought up a particular way, he was brought up a particular way. Uh, you stick to your side because it worked for you and he stick to his side and uh, what has worked for him and his parents and then it become like a whole tag on our thing with parents and kids and going back to what i say about getting it right now so you have a lot of challenge 
in that case. They have a challenge where you're trying to get it right as a parent. Some of us don't grow with no father, don't grow with no mother. So some of the time we are just a wing it basically. We see how other kids operate with their parents and how the, those parents seem to be happy and content with their kids based on we don't see how the disciplinary actions are taken or where and how they're taking place. But we just see we kind of like say the, say the glory, but don't know the story kind of vibes. So we know trying to interpret that as that parent is submissive to that child where the parent gives that child anything that child wants and spoil a child in a certain sense. And that in turn allow us to start dealing with our children like, oh yeah, I'm going to give my kids everything they want. And you know, my kids, me used to work hard on this and that, so my kid now going to work hard on this and that. And, you see, when we start doing things like that now, if one parent was brought up a traditional way where they look at things and say, you know what? My parents say, don't spoil the rod and spoil the child. And another parent who want to be that disciplinary action person who feel like, say, I like a spanking here and there helps to curve, carve, and, and, and maintain a good you know, positive or good uplifting child in a sense. And, you know, it's just, a, I think that's a topic that a lot of us should speak about because it's, it's, a, it's a real challenge. You know, um, like I told a lot of people in, in, in conversations is, you know, to be completely honest, we as 80s babies, 80s, um, early 80s, um, I almost get caught in the 70s, but early 80s, um early late 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 um 80s babies you know whether from 80 go straight back to 89 we are um people and kids who i think based on my experience my assessment and what i have acknowledged is we are some of the kids especially the boys the men we are have tried so much to make sure that our kids don't get up and say oh what my daddy did uh and and, and then we get classified our class as deadbeat. We have tried so much, and I've seen that in a lot of my peers. I've seen that in a lot of my friends and people that you know we grew up with, we go high school with, we we um graduate together. You know, we're still in communications with each other, even if we don't really talk on a regular basis. I've just seen it where we are definitely we have definitely tried our best and put in put our best foot forward. You know, try to do things that. We know, say, okay, my daddy never did it, but me, I did it for my little one because I saw it go and I saw me want it for go. You know, so I think things like these, um, what we're trying to do and trying to get it right is very crucial and it's very important. And I think people should look at them things there and, 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 and give us a little more credit than what we have been given. Because let me tell you this. In society that we're living in now, you never have no father. You have a stepfather who never really do much for you or whatever the case is, if you had any at all. Some of us, our mother, just keep things discreet where them not even bring man around us. They just do them little thing or whatever the case is. So we are there with mommy alone, single parent lifestyle. And we don't know what it takes to be a man. We weren't taught that part. You know, so when we get into a relationship you now with a, a significant other you now, and like I said, prematurely get into um baby father and baby mother situation, right? When we get into them situation, you know, how do we handle that as you're supposed to be a father? But we don't know our father is our father supposed to operate. You're supposed to be a good man, a gentleman. Okay, so how we do that? You know, and, and some of us had the privilege of seeing hunger and other people, you know, at a meal in the community if we grew up in a nice community or in the family where kind of take care of them woman or take care of them female and make sure she sees good at a certain level. And some of us pay attention to that. Some of us really look out and pay attention and learn from that. Some of us really don't. So, you know, <laughs> I tap myself on my shoulder and I want to big up all of the, the males that I have associated with in my life. I'm not saying I'm taking, not taking 
anything away from the females because me have to big up the both the male and the female in my age group that I've seen that are doing similar things to what my mother does. Then just work hard and try to get it right, you know. And I am super, super proud of that. You know, I'm super proud of the females that actually fight to make sure so they have a good relationship and work on it when they need to work on. I mean, I talk about me see a lot of females doing this without therapy, even though. I think therapy is of great importance, but I've seen a lot of females just do it and work on their relationship with their significant other and make it work, you know, just for these kids to have something at least a little bit better than what we had growing up, you know, and I just want to applaud my, my peers for that, you know, I really feel like it is important to be acknowledged and, and I liked it at, at some time because who teach us to be men, who teach us to be women, who are, you know, we are hold on the house, um, head of household kind of vibes. Nobody taught a lot of these young men how to be head of household. We have to figure that out for ourselves. We have to figure out how to structure bills, pay bills, figure out how to making sure that when we're up on the street, we, we, we secure time for our family even if we are a street man or a road man or whatever the case is. So these are things that we figure out and we try to figure out on, our, off, um, on ourselves. And then sometimes, you know, who teach us to know that, you know, at this point in, in a female's life, most of the time, you know, life is the greatest teacher, but, you know, a lot of us don't learn and understand or understand that more time than female in a zone or more time a man just want to be by himself in a zone. And when a man do not know, what does the significant other do? If a man does want to be by himself for a little time and, 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 and just know uh, the, you know deal with certain things, just take a little break. Now, how do you do that? And how do you have a, how do you kind of delegate the responsibilities to make sure that things is covered while you are in your zone? And, and this just goes to, um, for men and women, you know, when you want your little time, because I promise you, I'm not the only person like that, <laughs> you know, where sometimes we just need to be ourselves, by ourselves. And, you know, not saying that we're going to neglect our responsibility and things, but, you know, who teach a woman to overstand or understand that, you know what, that's just him, let me just deal with him and, 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 and you know, and respect that. Who teach a man? For those say, you know what, I just see that. I make my day here fair and make sure you know so she have a shoulder the same way. And we not judge nobody and blame nobody and accuse nobody of nothing. You know, we we'll teach us some things there. So, you know, really and truly, I'm just super grateful for everyone, especially, like I said, my peers who are, you know, doing their best still, fighting that fight still, working that work still to make sure that, you know, at some point in our lives, we, we were not taught certain things, but we understand things, you know, life teaching, you know, we, we understand how life is and we're not violating nobody daughter uh, or we're not violating nobody son either, you know, because you see one of the things that I've seen, you still have a little few careless people out there who feel like say, it's okay for them, whether it's a man, it's okay for him to style and class and beat up people daughter but it's not okay for some Addison son to do that to his daughter you know and vice versa you have some female out there who think that it's okay for her to style and con and play around with people's son but nobody enough to do that to fear son you know so we have to just break down a little barrier there and make sure we fully fully overstand you can run to the mountain, the mountain are gonna run from you. You run to the river, the river are gonna run from you. You can't run away from yourself. Bob Marley said it best. You're running and you're running and you're running away, but you can't run away from yourself. So the seed or plant and the things that we do as human being, it definitely has to forward. It has to forward around. So, you know, we have to just learn and continue learning. And I tell people all the time, like no matter how old you are or how young you are, we have to continue to learn. You know, one of my favorite quotes that I, I wrote on Facebook, like this was from 2007 or eight or whatever the case is, was, you know, his story, her story, 
we have to just try to figure out how our own story, you know, and figure out, learn from each other. And in order to teach, we have to remain teachable. Have to remain teachable. So if we're not willing to learn and, 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 and adapt things, then we don't, we, you know, in a sense, we're trying to teach people because that makes sense to me, you know. So, you know, we're going to leave that right there. <clears throat> but I really, again, want to just commend my friends, them. You know, I mean, I guess I call their name because the list really long. But just young men and women in my age group that I've, I've spoken to or spoken to in the past or still communicate with on a regular basis, or even if I don't know you. You know, just just make sure you take a big up from Chef Troy that you know you do it. Nobody never teach you. Nobody never did it to show you certain things. Or even if your um mommy teach you or daddy teach you, you know we, we get a lot of uh, lesson in our life, and some of us still not follow through with them. So big ups to the one that we really learn whether them learn from you know mommy daddy grandpa grand grandma um family member or just life teaching just trial and error because this old fatherhood thing that i am doing and a lot of people say i'm doing an awesome job at it but this fatherhood thing that i'm doing is a trial and error thing and we are trying to get it right we are do our best and, and overcome what we need to overcome and persuade what we need to persuade and pursue what we need to pursue to make sure that we get it right. You know, so I just write to say them and we have to just go and try our best and do the right thing for our offspring. You know, and we have to just keep going against the grid, you know, keep doing a little bit better and a little bit better. So great grandmother never get it right. Grandmother, just try a fair best and get it a little bit better. Good. Mommy, try and know she get it a little bit better. Good. Me, we gonna try to do it a little bit better until it get better and better and better. And the only way that can happen is if we consistently open and understand that we could just go and learn, man, and each one teach one, you know. And the rest is is just left up to the most high in the universe. All right. So now the second topic and second thing I really wanted to speak about um, on this awesome episode of Ita Talks podcast is just the entrepreneurial spirit of a lot of us as a young chef who we stay in the kitchen, we beat out yourself in the kitchen, we do all of these things in the kitchen for people, getting people rich. Trust me, if you're an awesome chef and you know what you're doing, or you're consistent and hardworking in whatever you're doing as a chef, trust me, you're getting somebody rich out there. If you are clucky in and I work with somebody, yeah, get somebody rich. Simple as that. So now we want to speak about some of the kids, them, some of the younger generation, them now, who feel like them watch a few videos are them going out in the kitchen for one, two months, and then them just jump out and set them out. Chef, them put chef right front of them name for one. And for two, them start services. Now, without any knowledge of running a business, without any knowledge of you know executing good quality service of food to people, but them just run out because them say, Oh, yeah, me see this, me know it all. Me open the book and look on the, the introduction of the book, and now me know everything in the book. Me assume everything, so I'm not have to do nothing else. Me talk to Uno. Me I talk to you. Pay attention, please. Me not throw no stone. I'm not disrespect nobody. I try to violate nobody. But what I want to understand is whatever feel that you're going to do as it relates to customer service and as it relates to food service, please do your research, do your homework, and continue to learn. Please continue to learn. Don't say no at all. Don't be like some of them cooks here when we did hire back in the days and them know it all and right now. Them in a the kitchen, pan the line, see them where, not even, no elevation, in the line, see them where, as one cook, only for regular cook pan the line. Please, try your best, man. Have some ambition, man. 
Learn and grow, man. I'm not showing a stone from nobody, but learn and grow. It's like that. Now, there are um, <clears throat> a lot of young chefs, actually, like myself. You know, of course, me. Who <laughs> answered it? Who answered it? Yeah, but, you know, a lot of young chefs are realized nowadays is I'm going to the kitchen, them said I'm a chef, and them and start the things and start catering for people. No. They make it really bad for a chef who sees a chef. When I say season chef, I mean chef who have gone into the kitchen, chef who has worked as dishwasher, chef who has worked as as prep cook, chef who has worked as you know different things in the kitchen before them ever get a line cook position or a chef a sous chef position or any kind of, of of leading role in the kitchen. I really want to let you guys know that you see in this world that we live in and, and, and the service that we provide as chef, as seasoned chef, it's not a regular thing. It's really, 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 really hard work. When I mean, Jamaica and um me in home economics and, and, and them them used to look on a man in a home economic as a girl thing that you know that's more feminine, you know. But me did me did me personally did love cook. When my bridge and them come on my yard, we are run a boat with some chicken back or something. And we in a school and we are make with donut. And to be completely honest, home economics home economics they are some really pretty girl too. <laughs> so we're going to home economics. Learn, yeah, no, we love cooking and thing, but some nice girls are in there too. But you know, just just saying that to say we um we learn things and we are we're passionate and we are passionate about what we do. We're not passionate about cooking just because we are look some money. We're passionate about the cooking because we love cooking. When we are cooking, not coming like a work, you know. And some of these young chefs are cooks where we get into the kitchen and learn one and two things and things that them can Google the rest and YouTube the rest and just go out here. And when a chef like myself or a seasoned chef somebody call one of us and say yo chef um we have a dinner for 75 people um um you know and we have like six courses or five courses that we want you to execute and we give them a price now you have a run in and talk about oh yeah we can do that for 500 dollars or we can do that for um, 1500 dollars and then when we give our price now people are gonna look on it like okay so what's the difference look at what's the difference the service you are paid for the service, you are paid for the expertise, you are paid for everything that we are capable of doing as a seasoned chef. You are paid for some little mediocre things that people go watch do YouTube um, and create dishes. We are talking about chef what makes sauce from scratch. We are not talking about chef who are going to buy sauce in a jar and can and throw it out and warm it up and use it. We are talking about chef we're going to source organic ingredients, clean ingredients, and prepare gourmet dishes. That's what we are paid for. So don't bother get up and pay these little new entrepreneurs. And like I said, we're not born or not, not entrepreneurs. But give what's due. This is not room, but give what's due to Caesar. <laughs> no pun intended. Really and truly, yeah, man, it gets me irritated sometimes, man. To realize, say, as a chef, we are work. We put in the work. The world says we put in the work. And then there's a new upcoming entrepreneurial chef here now, so-called chef, who are gonna just come and say, "Oh, they want to undermine us. I don't want to charge for this and charge for that." And people look at them like, "Oh yeah, we could go with you. We could go with this person. Can this person cheaper?" I'm gonna tell you, man. My mother told me this a long time ago. Cheapness is not always good. And mommy tell me again, say, if you run too fast, you have to go run two times. Take your little time and do the thing the right way, man. Do your research. Pay attention to life and what life has to offer. Don't get about just jump for things because a little man might have a couple thousand followers when buy on Instagram or any other social media. Do your research. Do your research, get awesome chef, seasoned chef. You know, we have, we have a few of them where we are going to bring from the show too. Support the farmers them, support the, the, the awesome real chef them. 
support you know entrepreneurs who actually is passionate about what they might do not for the monetary gain alone but just really 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 in love with what they might do and passionate about it you know we, we, we want people who are passionate about their craft and passionate about presenting it to you people and you know when you people actually partake in in their cuisine or whatever they have to offer their services then you really and truly whatever it is whether it's 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 it's, it's like um like a dinner service or whether it's a catering where they drop off some food or whatever the case is when you consume whatever they provide for you you're supposed to taste that love that real love and that real passion that they have for what they're doing and providing for you and i think that is of great importance that is of so much great importance for us to do as human beings i really want all the young entrepreneurs Thumbs up for you. I'm really super proud of what you're doing and what you're trying to do. But I really want you to understand that it is of great importance, man. Stop undermine um, some of these awesome chefs because you out here I watch YouTube and you have a better camera and you know if you take picture a little bit better. So you out here posting some pretty dish, buying a couple thousand followers, and then I sell people sad story on a plate. Your food's supposed to tell a story. Every single dish that Troy Levy does tell a story. Every single dish, bar none, tells a story. It has to have some history and some story. Sometimes I sit down and eat some food and I just feel like, oh, this me just stuff. What is me just spend $500 upon or $2,000 upon? You have to make sure your food tells a story. When people consume your food, they will consume the, the natural love that you have to have for them. It's like an offering, you know? I, I always tell my clients and customers that when we offer you a plate of Ital food from Chef Troy Levy or Taste of Ital, um, it's not just typical food or regular food that somebody can whip up in their kitchen and push out from here. We offer you love, part of us on the plate. You know, so that's 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 my encouragement to a lot of these entrepreneurs or young entrepreneurs who feel like they really want to be successful in this business this culinary business i really want you guys to be passionate about what you do you know make sure say when you service people with food in any any situation Make sure it's some clean, healthy, organic food. And make sure, say, I yeah, do it from your heart with love. You know, because, it, all, you know, like John Lennon said, man, all we need is love. You know? All we need is love, man. Put some love on the plate and provide the people with some awesome food. And, you know, this has definitely encouraged me. This platform that I'm, I'm, I'm doing right now, I think, more and more people are gravitating towards it and liking it and i'm loving it as well man we we just have to have them conversation here who a lot of people are very fearful to communicate about we have to start talking to our children and trying to find out ways of how this society is growing and also just whatever field that we're in man we just master it talk about it see how best we can we can fix it up and organize it a little bit more for making it more sweeter and nicer. You know what I mean? So I just, them things that we try to talk about, man. We try to talk about things where, you know, it's just natural. It's ITAL. So this has been another episode of ITAL Talks podcast. I'm your host, Chef Troy Levy. And please, may I beg you, if you haven't told your friend or family members about ITAL Talks podcast as yet, please do that. Whenever I post the link or I start share it among my friends and, and family, a lot of people have been telling me that them watch it. Oh, yeah, man, Chef Trump, watch it. But them not leave a comment. Them not leave a like. Them not leave a thumbs up. Just leave a little like, a little thumbs up, and let me know someone watch it. Don't tell me someone to watch it, because I'm not going to believe that. I want to see some thumbs up. I want to see some likes. I want to see some shares. I want to hear your comment, your information. What how you feel about this episode? How you feel about the last episode? How you feel about um the the um, taste of ital condiments? 
do you feel about Chef Troy Levy, you know, taking this step to do this? You know, that's that's tell me something, man. Really and truly appreciate of the ones them. And like we always say, man, regardless of what going on the earth here, put your first and second and third and just watch the blessings come forth, man. Always saying bless and Jah will do the rest. Give thanks.